atomic energy, the most sensational discovery of our age. Energy, when misused, could blast us off the face of the earth. But energy, if used constructively, may oust electricity as a universal source of power in the days to come. Less than a half century ago, the theory of atomic energy was nothing more than the brainchild of a mathematical genius, Einstein, a scientist seeking knowledge in unknown fields. This has always been true of all great discoveries and inventions in the realm of science. Scholars imbued with a spirit of research, ever curious, never caring for personal rewards, but inspired by the hope that their work would benefit their fellow men. High ideals like these brought into being the National Physical Laboratory of India at New Delhi. Its foundation stone was laid in January 1947 by Mr. Nehru. The late Deputy Prime Minister, Sardar Patel, declared the laboratory open in January 1950 in the presence of distinguished citizens and foreign and Indian scientists. The laboratory is governed by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, whose chairman is our Prime Minister and its director, Dr. S. S. Bhatnagar, FRS. A sleek, imposing building, the National Physical Laboratory, or NPL for short, is fully air-conditioned throughout the year. Covering an area of 250,000 square feet, the laboratory is fitted with every amenity for our men of physics. Credit for its planning must in large measure be given to Dr. K. N. Mathur. The laboratory is headed by Dr. Krishnan, FRS, an eminent scientist renowned for his research in various fields of physics. There are many types of research carried out here that are of practical value to nation-building projects. For instance, throughout India, bridges of every size and for every purpose are being built. A study of stress and strains due to varying weight is important to bridge designers. In this connection, the director advises a scholar on how to study such stresses and strains. The well-stocked library supplies the basic knowledge already available on the subject. Fortified by this information, the scholar comes up with an idea for a suitable apparatus which he discusses with the design engineer. The design engineer sees the idea in terms of feet and inches. This becomes a diagram and later a blueprint. The laboratory's well-equipped workshop makes the apparatus from the blueprint. With the apparatus assembled, it's ready for the scholar's experiments. A bridge model made from transparent material is loaded onto the straining frame. Movable weights duplicate actual conditions. The light pattern seen through this polarizing instrument represents the distribution of stresses. Models of hooks and so forth can also be similarly studied. Another subject of study is the manufacture of carbon rods. They provide the intense light in cinema projectors. The rods are now being made in India for the first time at the NPL. To manufacture carbon rods and brushes, indigenous materials like coal or coke are first crushed. Then with an air separator built at the NPL, the particles are separated according to size. The particles are mixed with tar and pitch in a steam heated roller mixer. High pressure forces the substance out into carbon rods of required size. Or it can be molded into blocks for brushes. Here's a variety of carbon products made at the NPL. Your radio wouldn't utter a sound without its mica condensers. These condensers are made here. First, mica pieces are cut to required size. They are then sprayed with a solution of silver oxide in lacquer. And later, treated by heat. As a protection against moisture, the condensers are coated with wax. Condensers are also being made from the black beach sands of Travancore. The optical microscope accelerated scientific research in many fields. But the latest marvel is the electron microscope, through which we can see an object no larger than one ten millionth of an inch. The specimen is examined not by a beam of light, but by a beam of electrons. The beam is generated by a high voltage circuit. Magnetic coils converge the beam, the action being the same as that of an optical lens. The electron microscope has made possible the study of details not visible to the optical microscope. 
man's potential rival, the electronic brain. Here's a component devised by the NPL. A signal starts a circuit of controlled mechanical thinking. Automatic operation of industrial processes are thus made possible. The romance of prospecting today is not for gold, but for uranium, a vital source of atomic energy. The prospector's companion, a compact unit which can detect radioactivity, is called a Geiger counter. The moving needle and earphone clicks show the presence of radioactive material. Powder from a rock sample is placed in a lead enclosure along with Geiger counter tubes. The lead enclosure minimizes the effects of cosmic rays. The radiations from the radioactive specimen produce impulses which can be recorded. The rate of impulses determines the strength of radioactivity. We may yet live to see the day when rockets will carry us across the universe. Here's a spectrograph, an apparatus which records the results of combustion similar to that in the jet. These observations undertaken at the NPL may help us understand the details of jet combustion. Another type of research, this time to help our textile industry, is microphotography. Cloth samples photographed through a microscope reveal characteristics that can't be seen by the naked eye. An evaporation unit designed here coats mirrors and lenses efficiently. Metal placed on a heated tungsten filament evaporates in a vacuum. The metal vapor condenses evenly and brightly on the glass surfaces. In the section devoted to acoustics, the characteristic sounds of Indian musical instruments are being visually studied. Research at very low temperatures, close to absolute zero, is now made possible at the NPL by the installation of a machine which can liquefy helium gas. Here's levitation in the laboratory, which can be demonstrated with a magnet and a suitable metal cup at liquid helium temperatures. This large electromagnet at the NPL can be used to produce temperatures that are still lower. The NPL can test the capacity of materials to withstand shock. A weight falling from a suitable height determines the force of fracture of that material. This machine measures the tensile strength of metals to record their carrying capacity. In this case, the pull increases to four tons before the sample snaps. The NPL has a series of standard tests for manufactured electrical goods. The voltage is increased until the circuit breaks down thus giving an idea of whether the instrument is above or below standard. Here's accuracy where time is concerned, achieved through the oscillations of a quartz crystal. This incredible crystal clock varies no more than a fraction of one second in a whole year. Certainly the thing for keeping Father Time on his toes. A waterfall was only a work of art until man made it work for him, producing electrical energy. But we have overlooked the greatest potential source of energy, and it's right under our noses, or rather, above them, the sun. Coax the sun's rays with mirrors like these, and see the saving in fuel. The lady will have nothing to pay for cooking her vegetables, or toasting chapatis. This is truly the sunny side of the kitchen. Solar energy can be converted into mechanical energy to drive a small engine. Here's an ingenious device, a metal detector, just the thing for catching those gold smugglers. When a probing coil comes near metal, it deflects the needle. A warning light comes on and squeaks begin. Yes, it's in the bag, the metal that is. INSDOC, the Indian National Scientific Documentation Center at the NPL is a cooperative venture of the Indian government and UNESCO. UNESCO has supplied the trained personnel and equipment. A large variety of technical journals is received here. Microfilm copies of scientific data are supplied to those who require them. This obviates much typing work, as well as the necessity of redrawing complex diagrams or the checking of numerical data and formulas. Expert linguists 
translate foreign language papers into English for general information and circulation. The research done by the NPL on behalf of our industries is of great practical importance. The institution, equipped with every modern scientific accessory, has a section devoted to glass techniques and another for analytical chemistry. Its workshop is the very latest and its library a storehouse of scientific knowledge. Already functioning for five years, the National Physical Laboratory is doing valuable work. Let us give credit to the institution, but more important, to its men, our men of physics. Here's hoping then that in the not too distant future, their names will star in the bright firmament of international scientific fame. Thank you.